So I'm smoking some uh, distinguished gentleman from uh, E. Hoffman out in Boston. Not that I'm a distinguished gentleman, but uh, it just happened to sound kind of good. In a custom built uh, later years, you know, one thing I like about these later ones, even though they're maybe not as authentic, not made by Tracy Mincer in Indianapolis, uh, it's probably rich years. But these can be just really in great shape and just crisp. You know, that kind of routering texture that was pretty much unique to custom built. I mean, people copied it, but it was their idea. And uh, it is just crisp. I'm sure you can't see that. I'm using a camera I haven't used for a while, a Sigma DP. 2M. Uh, and I really like the sensor on the Sigma. I like the way it captures color. Um, does amazing monochrome captures. It's a whole different kind of sensor than a buyer sensor. Uh, it's a, called a Foveon sensor. So I really like that. I'd pick up a DP3, which has a uh, a very moderate telephoto lens. They're all fixed lens, fixed, uh, you know, no zooming, no nothing. It's a fixed lens, kind of a higher-end camera. Um, but I haven't found one cheap enough. Uh, yeah. So, anyway. So the quality, alas, on video. <laughs> Sorry about that. Is kind of kind of marginal, but I just like the camera. I like the feel of it. I like the way the interface works. I like I just like everything about it. And then I kind of like Fuji cameras too, as a second best. Um, I think their color is the earth tones and so forth. They're kind of more realistic, nicer. So I've used the others. But um, I don't know. They just they just aren't as comfortable for me. Everybody's got their favorites. This is really a little more of a, more of a bent than I normally go for too. But you know, you pick these up on eBay, and it's like, yeah, I wondered one of those. So yeah, it kind of uh, gets in the way of my collarbone. That's one thing I don't like about Oompals. That uh, steep, uh, very bent shape is, uh, it, I just kind of knock them around a little bit on myself as I'm doing stuff. So, but I hadn't smoked this in a while and it kind of said, smoke me. I said, okay. So we're in mid-ish December. Yeah, let's call it mid-December. Not quite the the nadir of sunlight, but um, getting there. Pretty short days, pretty long nights. So, you know, it's just kind of cold, often wet. Uh, I was at a fire department meeting yesterday in the prediction from the Department of Emergency Management, which was pretty much right on last year, is for a couple of snow events and a couple more wind events this winter coming up. So, we'll see. Hopefully not big snow events. I never really liked Christmas, you know? It's just the darkest time of the year. It's sort of filled with false sentimentality, um, a lot of expectations. I find it more of a meditative time of year. And, uh, and I acknowledge that, and I enjoy that part of it. But uh, great time to read, <laughs> great time to see movies.
So my uh, grandfather on my mom's side was a small town doctor in Nebraska. And uh, I asked him once, I said, Grandpa, when do most people die? Um, you know, if you're dying of old age, I, I mean, it seems logical that you would just, your body would just last as long as it could and then it would just expire. But he said, um, around this time of year, a lot of people have this pressure to hang on through the holidays. And then after that, it's like, bye-bye. Like a little crash after Christmas in January. So that kind of makes sense to me. I was talking with my brother who... Uh, He's just so smart. I mean, honest to God, he's really smart. Uh, he he had he did not finish high school. Uh, not because he wasn't smart enough, but you know, it just it just didn't quite work with who he was at that time. So um, he's going to be easily the most successful of us. Easily, totally. Um, So as one of his uh, little investment strategies, uh, he, when my folks passed away, they had purchased a plot in a, a place in Denver called Crown Hill on the west side of Denver in Wheat Ridge. And uh, so there were, you know, it was kind of a older cemetery, well taken care of, but older. And so there were some plots available. So, apparently the cemetery was offering zero down and either very low interest or maybe no interest, who knows, just in order to sell them. So he, he bought a number of uh, cemetery plots. And we were amused at the time. But, you know, they really appreciate it. Wow. He's... You know, it's a limited supply deal. And uh, even when people are cremated, my aunt, my mom's sister, has said to me, she said, even if you're cremated, um, you should get yourself a cemetery plot with a headstone. Because uh, oftentimes cemeteries, and I've seen it myself, uh, are... places of census in a way where that are visible that are available to people they aren't just a list of of statistics and uh, and so it's a little more uh, colorful a little more available to historians I've seen it so I think she's right so I'm talking to my brother uh, about buying one of his plots <laughs> in Denver. You know, we don't often think about, well, where are you going to be interred? Let's use the undertaker's term. Or, sorry, funeral director? Is that still the appropriate term? It may be even more softened now. <laughs> I know a few of them. I should ask. Um, undertaker is definitely politically incorrect. Anyway, this time of year makes me think about such stuff. I'll be back in Denver in early January. Fortunately, there have been some deaths and bad news in the family. So I'm going to fly back for a memorial service. And try and stop in that, uh, I forget what the name of it is, the pipe shop down on South Broadway. Um, great place. I can I can still remember going in there when I first started smoking a pipe. And I walked into the humidor and there was a bale of like 15 pounds of uh, Dunhill 965 in there. And it just filled that place with the most remarkably wonderful aroma. Hmm. Anyway, it's a uh, 
as I remember, it was a great pipe shop. And so, yeah, it's a must, must see. Not quite sure when I'm, when, uh, I don't think they set up that service yet, so. I don't know when I'll be there, but I'll be there. But this time of year kind of makes you think about such things. Or it does me, I don't know. Maybe everybody's so jazzed about buying gifts and Santa and, you know, all that mythology that, um, yeah. It's fine. Whatever. Whatever. Hmm. I hear somebody. Elsa! Kitty kitty. No, she's out there somewhere. So I also, uh, I've always been interested in that topic of sort of a forbidden topic, you know, death and all of that. And that uh, has led me to explore in a lot of different areas. But uh, uh, Becker wrote a book called The Denial of Death, which I discovered in college. And uh, I've still got a copy of it. I, ha I haven't really opened that in a while. But the contention being that much psychology, <laughs> pathology, is uh, based on our inability to accept death. So uh, it's a fascinating topic, I think. Because it sort of gets to the core gets down deeper uh, into psychological motivations and so forth. Hmm. Yeah. A many bold discussion. Anyway, this uh, custom built smokes well as most all of them do, you know, uh, they're good smoking pipes, but many pipes are good smoking pipes. It's not like, oh yeah, the pipe smokes so much better. You know, if you do a few things like clean it up, open up the air passage in the bit, uh, ream out to 530 seconds, the shank, uh, clean it out, you're good to go. Got a good smoking pipe, no matter how cheap or awful it is. Some sm pipes do seem to smoke hotter, like uh, Dr. Grabo's tend to be pretty warm for me, the bowl and so forth, just because they're so thin. But, uh, yeah, a lot of pipes smoke great <laughs> if, you, if you do the right things to them. So. Little update on the chiropractic. So I went through a, like 28 sessions of chiropractic. Three times a week, then two times a week, then one time a week. Combined with some acupuncture and some uh, heavy duty massage. Not uh, enjoyable massage. <laughs> it was like, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> and you know, that has helped my back. Um, But it's not a long-term fix, I don't think. Um, and I'm not willing to go the surgical route at this point at all. Or even, and I've I've been off ibuprofen for since I started the chiropractic. 
and that's a good thing. So what it has done for me, I think it did uh, provide perhaps some somewhat of a realignment. Although some days I wake up and I'm just like <coughs> crooked. Um, physical therapy, intense directed physical therapy, I think is probably my, my next step. But uh, it has given me a different relationship with that pain in my back. I mean, before it was like somebody had stuck a dagger in there and they were twisting it. And it was just like debilitating, you know? But now I can, I can feel it coming on and I can stretch and I can work it out. And it's still there. It's often there. And I can function. So, yay. Without painkillers. So, yeah. So, it was good. It was good. I mean, for that 28 sessions, out of pocket was significant. You know, it was like 850 or something like that. But insurance covered 70% of it. So, it was something to try. needed to try it. Who better to experiment on than yourself, right? So, and that saga may never be done. You know, I'm never going to be fixed. And I don't really expect to be. But, um, I think there's a lot of physical manipulation I can do that will ease that and make it more workable. So, so that was my first step in doing that. Distinguished Gentleman is pretty good. It has a, just the littlest bit of soapiness. Could have been in the pipe. I cleaned this pretty well. But when you get in the state pipe, you never <laughs> truly know which has been in there. So there might be a little ghosting from the past. But, yeah, Distinguished Gentleman is good. <laughs> 